Jeff Bezos punts on the Washington Commanders for now. Well, he set his sight on the Seahawks. That the head and subhead from the story from Teddy Schleifer from Puck News, who joins us now. Teddy, thanks for blowing up our show rundown today. We genuinely appreciate it. Happy to happy to sow a little chaos. Yes, absolutely. So let me ask you the very simple, straightforward question to get us started here. What changed uh, from Jeff Bezos? What did you learn that made you say, uh, actually, uh, it goes from everyone fears Bezos, he's looming, he's lurking, to he's not, he's not going to bid on this team? Both those things can be true. Um, I mean, I think there was a lot of paranoia um, around a Bezos bid from other, uh, other bankers around the deal, from the other bidders. Um, uh, I don't think anything about the kind of atmospherics around a, a, a Bezos bid have, have changed at all. And frankly, like, I don't even know if this story will change any of that. Like, there still is going to be, you know, paranoia until the ink is dry, um, um, you know, from a Josh Harris or another bidder. Um, you know, I, I think people should read this reporting closely. We're not saying that, you know, Jeff Bezos is, will not be the owner of the Washington Commanders and all is said and done. We're saying as of right now, he's currently not planning on submitting a bid. Um, which, you know, could always change. Sure. Um, as of now, though, I would bet on it not happening. Um, and the paranoia that uh, surrounds Bezos is to some extent founded, right? Because this is a guy who to some extent doesn't really need like a lot of, uh, a lot of energy to, to get a bid over the finish line. Like creating liquidity for him would not be difficult. You know, he knows where to fa- find Dan Snyder. Um, it's not difficult to, to make this deal happen. Um, pretty quickly if his mind uh, does does change but as of right now it's it's not a bit is not being prepared I guess that's kind of the the question of the crux of this then is like like what's yeah. what's the impetus for the story right like was he leaning towards it was he considering it and then he's like no probably not and then why why is he leaning towards not at this time um I'll, I'll be honest I don't have all the details at this point I mean I think some of you know the uh the the, the the way that journalism works, right, is you're sort of just getting uh, it's iterative, right? You get you get right. a little bit of reporting at, at a time. Um, I don't I don't have a great answer for you on kind of what changed. Um, I mean, I reported uh, over the last couple of weeks that you know Bezos was definitely interested in owning a team. Um, I've reported that you know he even talked to Snyder at one point over the last couple of months. He obviously hired Allen and Co. bankers, so this was not like you know oh speculative. Like is Jeff Bezos interested? Who knows? If he was taking active steps. To, uh, to try to uh, purchase the team, or at least to explore purchasing the team. And ultimately, as of right now, um, he's currently not planning to do that. So um, why that is, I, I'm, you know, I'm happy to speculate, but I just want to be clear that I, I would be speculating. No, totally understand. Uh, Teddy Schleifer from Puck News is with us. And I think when you, like the most interesting thing prior to this that you reported is that they had met because there was this idea that they hated each other, that they're just mm-hmm. bashing each other, uh, whether overtly or, you know, to friends or subtly through the press. And I, I just wonder, like, as you know, I, I understand this is getting into the speculative zone. If you're Bezos and all of that stuff is kind of happening on the periphery, even if you had a one on one conversation with Dan, are you not interested in this team because of all of the hoopla around it? It's just complicated, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Or is it more of he got into the books, he saw it. He's obviously a good businessman because he's one of the richest people in the world, which I guess isn't always mm. true that that's the case. Uh, but like in his case, he seems to be a decent enough businessman that he's built a two hundred billion dollar empire, and he's like, yeah, I don't think this is probably the right the right financial move or or whatever business reason that that would go. Like, is it? I guess to to boil that down to a simpler question, is it personal? Sure. Is it business? Look, I mean, uh, the there's been kind of. Uh, uh, I would say contradictory reporting in, in, in aggregate about whether or not Snyder would welcome uh, a bid by Bezos. Um, you know, there I think it was the athletic reported that he wouldn't. And then, you know, Charlie Gasparino of Fox business is saying that's overblown. Um, I don't entirely know, uh, you know, whether or not Dan has formally, you know, forbidden Jeff from placing a bid or from getting close to this. Um, you know, I'm speculating here, but like, at the end of the day, I think it kind of comes down to the math, right? Like if, if Jeff was offering seven billion and Josh Harris is offering six, like is Snyder really gonna turn down an extra billion dollars because he doesn't like, you know, stories that are written in the Washington Post? Um, that feels unlikely to me. 
Um, so, but yeah, another possibility here for sure is that, you know, Jeff, you know, did not think this made sense as a business strategy. Um, but look, I mean, the, 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 I don't know. I feel like what you see is what you get with the commanders financially here, right? I mean, obviously there's the stadium uh, X factor, um, but you know what the media deals look like. Um, if you're Jeff, like, are you really learning that much um, from, from, from the NDA? I mean, I'm sure I'm going to be, um, you know, criticized by, by bankers and lawyers who are paid exorbitant fees for, the, for this advice. But like <laughs> the, 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 the business kind of is the business. Um, and I don't know if it's really that complicated. <laughs> you just me to say in the chief seats. I understand that. Um, so um, at the end of the day, maybe it has to do with the fact that, you know, right, the Seahawks could be available in a couple of years. Like Jeff was not really that interested in the commander specifically, is my sort of read on this. Like he wants to own an NFL team. Um, there are only so many NFL teams that come available, right? Obviously, um, you know, Josh Harris, for instance, been on the Broncos a couple of years ago. Like, does Josh Harris love the commanders versus loving the Broncos? It was just like, you want to own a team and there's only 32 opportunities and it's very illiquid. And, you know, you'd be foolish if you want to own a team, not to bid on every single one. Um, so I don't necessarily think it was like a commander's obsession for Jeff. And maybe if it was, maybe he would be actually bidding on it. Uh, Teddy Schleifer from Puck News with us. I have a very TMZ question, but uh, you've referenced this in reporting, so I'm just going to ask it. A part of Bezos' interest in football, he says it's his favorite sport, but he also, uh, his girlfriend, Lauren Sanchez, who is the uh, ex-wife yeah, of Tony sure. Gonzalez, who, according to your reporting, is someone that Bezos considers a friend, uh, like it's her favorite yeah. sport too. How's that all work? How's that work that uh, yeah, a- Lauren Sanchez and and her ex-husband are, are both – friends of Jeff Bay or like that, that they're, they're all friends. How's that work? It, it's not, not TMZ. I mean, it's, I think it's very relevant to the storyline. Um, you know, Be- Bezos, uh, you know, obviously got this very high profile divorce from uh, Mackenzie Scott a few years ago. Uh, and, you know, has very much kind of remade his life uh, around, around Lauren. You know, uh, you just need, need not look any further than, than their Instagrams to get a, a snapshot of, of, uh, you know, the, the middle age love that they have found and good for them. Um, you know, Lauren has talked publicly about sort of this, I think she called it like a Brady Bunch uh, uh, kind of family where um, I believe she and Tony have a kid together. I believe that's true. Um, uh, maybe, yeah, I think it's one kid. Someone can track check me on that. Um, um, so it's a very blended family. You know, Jeff obviously is kids with Mackenzie from uh, the prior family and, uh, you know, Lauren Sanchez is on very good terms with Tony Gonzalez and like this is public, right? I mean, you see, uh, you see, uh, sometimes on Thursday night football, which of course Tony Gonzalez is one of the, uh, one of the guys in the field, but you see, you know, Lauren and, and sometimes Tony and, you know, Jeff all at games together. Um, it's a blended family or, or Brady Bunch element as, as Lauren calls it. Uh, yeah. And, uh, doing the fact check here, uh, they do, they do have one son together. One kid. Okay. Uh, and right, then okay. he's got, I think, if I'm reading this correctly, three others uh, from, from his... his first life. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Um, okay, so that now leaves what is kind of the, the remaining question. I know you've been yeah. super locked in on Bezos, but like you cover all of this. You, you're, you're locked into the billionaire class as well as anyone, and uh, Josh Harris is seemingly, uh, according to, if you kind of do the, the aggregate of all the reporting, <laughs> the guy that, that is... In big time driver's seat here, uh, Steve Apostolopoulos, or as I call him, because everyone keeps giving me different pronunciations of his last name, Canadian Stephen A. He he is trying to put together a bid, but it doesn't seem like it's going to pass the NFL's muster. Like, what what is the the path forward now here? Also, knowing according to the reporting that you put out today that Dan could circle back around to Jeff Bezos at the end and be like, "All right, man, last chance," and then sure. Bezos could go, "Well, okay, in that case, here's your check." Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, look, that, to some extent, you could argue that, you know, none of the facts have really fundamentally changed, right, which is that Josh has always sort of been in the driver's seat. He has a fully financed, you know, $6 billion bid. Um, you know, the Steve Apostle Loop, I don't know how you pronounce it. Actually, I'm going to call him Steve. The Steve bid, um, uh, you know, is at, uh, is at six, but, like, I know there's been some question about the financing there. Um, so, uh, you know, I think Josh Harris is still the favorite for this thing. Um, and that hasn't really changed. Um, and, you know, he has a, uh, he has a, a bid that looks like a conventional bid and it's been, you know, uh, has all the text, all the right boxes. He's got kind of this consortium of, of well-wishers and celebrities and, you know, Josh has owned a professional sports franchise before, or, you know, so he, this is not, 
Uh, it's a safe path, you know, to take Josh's bid. Does not require like, you know, re- reassessing the conflict of interest policy with like media deals. Like I think a, taking a Jeff bid would. Um, so it's sort of simple. And and you know, um, if, if Snyder wants to get back at you know wants to circle back with Jeff at the very end of this, um, that obviously is still on the table. But um, you know, I think if you're if you're betting on you know on predicted or whatever the equivalent is, I don't think this is a DraftKings. Uh, a DraftKings uh, betting line, but you know, I feel like you would. We're be we're well. a bet MGM show personally, but that's fine. There you go. Uh, can you bet on owner on who wins an owner? I don't. I don't, I don't think. I don't think that's on okay. on the book uh, in our <laughs> in our place. Fun. But some someone yeah, but somewhere you can. I mean, the, the 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 Josh Harris line, uh, you know, is, is looking pretty pretty inviting at this point. Um, you- so. Yeah, do you think, uh, from what you've been able to garner, that it will get done by these owners' meetings coming up in May, which is kind of what the NFL is certainly hoping? Yeah, I don't have a great sense on that. I mean, I think people who kind of are better sourced in the league would, would, would have a better sense on that. But, I mean, it definitely is crunch time here. Um, you know, Snyder, obviously, is only committed technically to, like, reviewing strategic transactions or whatever bullshit he said. So, like, so, so he theoretically could, you know, take this as long as he wants. But uh, as of right now, I feel... Uh, pretty pretty confident that like this is going to get done at some point. Um, you know the Josh bid is. I think this could be done quickly if you really wanted to. It's it's really a question of like of not logistics, but of you know Dan Snyder, you know sipping a tequila on the beach and and you know deciding what he wants to do with his life. I mean that that's I don't know how long that takes, right? I mean that that could take. That sort of depends on how, how neurotic any of us are. Uh, it doesn't really depend on business. Yeah, um, Teddy Scheifler is with us from Puck News. Uh, real quick on that front, because that is something I've heard as well, kind of in the, I don't want to call it reporting that I'm doing, just talking to a bunch of people yeah, who sure. are covering this, um, both in radio interviews like this or, um, you know, just kind of talking to people off air, is that this sale has been so bizarre because of Dan and that he is just a different person. He operates in his own way, on his own schedule, doing things that make absolutely no sense to other people. And like sometimes simple things like getting a response to an email or getting him to pick up the phone for a very basic functional thing has been incredibly difficult. Have you heard things like that throughout this process? Mm. Um, or is, is that something that, that has escaped your, uh, your purview so far? Yeah. I, I, I haven't heard that. That's very interesting. Tell, tell me more. Like, well, like what's this, like, it would just, is that just kind of his, his personality, or what, what do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, I I would say I don't want to go too deep into it in part because it's not my original reporting, right? Like, I don't want to be spilling what other sure. reporters are, are perhaps working on or, or what they haven't obviously put out uh, in a, with enough confidence that they're reporting it themselves. But the general sense I get from talking to other multiple people covering this, and I've had multiple people say this to me um, who are covering this, is that he just kind of does things his own way. Um, that, you know, if, if you know, a simple, hey, we needed a signature on this this file is the kind of thing that used in a different sale, in the Broncos sale, would get done in a day because you call the person, they do it, and that's their job, that getting a hold of him it can be incredibly difficult. And that is one of the reasons why this process has been so much slower. And I would say for, for those of us covering it, specifically here in D.C. from a very local, like, fan-driven level, has been incredibly frustrating because it's been drawn out because uh, because some of the kind of basic dotting of I's, crossing of T's, that is just the simple run of play in other business transactions is incredibly difficult to do with him because he's just bad at doing all this stuff. Absolutely, absolutely, that, that makes sense. I mean, look, I mean, easy, easy for us to say. Neither of us have, have been you know billionaire owners of an NFL team, and uh, <laughs> uh, I, I imagine you know for for Dan, who's you know as wife Tanya, who owned this franchise for what. 20, 25 years, uh, letting go is hard. You know, uh, I thought about selling my car and I've, I've wasted more time on, on that than I have on Dan <laughs> Snyder trying to sell this NFL team. Yeah. I mean, another thing that I've said, uh, all along that, that folks need to remember is like his entire identity was being the owner of his team and, uh, yeah. to, to give yeah. up on your identity is, is something that's not going to go on easily. Um, but it's his fault. Also, so there's that. Also, the, also the bit, the bit like, like, like the, to make this, not to reduce this just to like, you know, dollars and cents, but like, you know, the, the the I think the feeling around uh, like sports franchises in general is that these are sort of like inflation, uh, inflation retardant assets um, right. that you know at a time when uh, you know it just feels like sports franchises because of 
obviously limited supply, like keep going up and up in value. So if you're Dan, you're selling, selling this in 2023 for $6 million, like what if you look dumb in 10 years for not selling it for, you know, $600 billion or something, I'm joking, but like, you know, some, some, uh, something greater, you know, 10 years from now or giving it to the kids or, you know, who knows what, what kind of games you can play with from a tax perspective. I mean, um, so it's not only a sense of like belonging, but I think there's also a sense that, you know, uh, maybe it's just bad business sense to sell it right now. Though, you know, Jeff, sorry, Dan obviously has political and regulatory and legal uh, reasons why, yeah, you might want to consider selling. But from a business perspective, um, you know, it's not just kind of psychological. Um, I think there's actually a feeling that, you know, you should uh, sell this to the, to the best bidder and the best bidder might be in 10 years. Right. And he obviously, I mean, if it's up to him, he keeps it. And even if he doesn't get to do anything and Tanya runs it, he gets to give it to his kids, which was always his goal. But uh, it seems yep. that, uh, you know, the 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 consequences uh, of his actions, they're, they're coming to get him. Uh, speaking of that, though, like the general kind of market right now, um, mm-hmm. a, as you look at the, the, you know, the folks that you cover, and again, Teddy Scheifler, uh, who is, or Teddy Schleifer, who is a writer for Puck News, who covers, I, I, am I describing your beat correctly? You essentially cover yeah, sure. billionaires. Um, I like, cover, yeah, I cover rich people who want to buy teams. Right. I mean, uh, yeah, Quite but also that, yeah. other things, right? And and it's one thing to look at the Angels um, and their sale, which they were pulled off the market, or Manchester United is in a really weird spot right now, which is perhaps the best comparison for the Commanders because although it's a different country, different league, whatever, like you're talking about a legacy franchise that it, when it happens, depending on the order that these two teams sell, is going to be the most expensive sports transaction in the history of the world. So like the fact that that has, has kind of slowed down and been an interesting one to watch, but also if you look at other, you know, big giant M and a type of things or, you know, companies being bought out at these kinds of prices, what is the kind of bigger picture market in terms of mm. the business side of this right now? In terms of all, all, all teams, you mean like all, all sports? I would say all teams, all sports, and anything else that yeah, someone sure. buys for six billion dollars. I mean, look. I mean, I mean. I think the the one one big trend that's happening right now is um, wealthy people um, who want to buy or you know want want the fun, frankly, of like being a, a professional sports owner or like going into things outside of the four major professional sports. You know, if with with MLB, NHL, NFL, NBA, you know, there's what 120, 125 teams. And, you know, how many sales are there a year of these things? Like three or four? Like, what? I mean, the Suns were just up. You know, I think, the you know, the Timberwolves were up a couple of years ago. And, yeah, you're seeing people, like, lots of wealthy people get into, like, Formula One teams, right? Or, or um, you know, a big storyline in the world of billionaires is uh, women's soccer. Um, you know, yeah. lots of wealthy people, like Sheryl Sandberg is involved right, recently in, you know, creating a, a women's NFL, sorry, a women's special soccer team in the Bay Area. Um, so you're seeing, you're seeing wealthy people go outside of the four major sports. Um, uh, you know, you're seeing billionaires go into like esports too, right? Um, I think there's just a limited number uh, of teams and, you know, when, when people buy these things, partially for tax reasons, um, they're unlikely to sell. Um, and so they want to pass it to their heirs and you really only see kind of major sales when there's some like scandal, right? Like Robert Sarver or, uh, you know, Don Sterling or Dan Snyder. I mean, that's, that's when you see these things actually happen. So, um, uh, yeah, that, that, that's a big trend right now. And is that these assets are, are you're sort of seeing leakage to non-professional or non-major sports leagues. Um, and I think that's going to continue. I mean, um, unless, I mean, that's part of the reason why lots of these leagues are considering expanding, right? I mean, um, you know, there might be a new NBA team, uh, in the next couple of years. Um, who knows, maybe the NFL will expand at some point. Like there's, there's lots of, uh, business reasons to make the leagues bigger. Uh, part of that is you can invite in a whole new team with a whole new owner, and you know that pushes up its supply and demand. You know, you create greater demand for these teams, you greater supply, and you know suddenly uh, you're talking real money. Yeah, uh, and meanwhile, Kathy Engelbart over the WNBA is like, we don't yeah. want to fail. Like, Kathy, wake up. <laughs> Hello. All right. Uh, last thing I want to ask you though is, where does this leave sure. Bezos? Because now he's still a guy who's got more money than basically everybody else on the planet. And he would like to own an NFL team according to things he's telling people and has been telling people for a long time, but it's not going to be this one. The Seahawks are still out there. That doesn't get rid of the Amazon conflict issue, which I know you talked about with Sheehan. Uh, We actually played that bite on the show. I think it was yesterday, two days ago. Um, But that's still looming as an issue for him. Where does that leave Bezos if he indeed doesn't change his mind and doesn't buy the Washington Commanders? 
You know, yeah, I, I would expect um, you know the the Seahawks to be um, definitely in Bezos' sight. I'm not I'm not an expert on that situation. My understanding is like Jody Allen has to sell it in a couple of years, right? Um, yeah. Um, okay, right. Uh, I know it had something to do with kind of the trust situation with Paul Allen. Um, um, so you know th- that's a possibility. Um, you know, I, I could see it's, it's hard, sort of hard to tell like when when these teams will come up. I mean, I will say you know Bezos is only like 55, um, and you know, he is in a, in a moment in his life right now where he is doing sort of almost reinventing his, his kind of uh, routines, right? Um, he bought the Washington Post in 2013. He is, you know, recently spent a couple of days at the Post building, like trying to tend to kind of the crises there. He's gotten very involved with philanthropy. You know, he started a, a climate change fund recently, along with a network of kind of Montessori preschools. So, like, it's not as if he's, like, sitting around all day, you know, like, moping about his inability to get an NFL team, right? He's got, he's got other stuff going on. He's still the executive chair and largest shareholder on Amazon. But I think the next beat in this saga is, like, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a final, you know, hey, are you buying this team sort of conversation, you know, in, in the next couple of weeks. Um, but And I also wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Bezos is the front runner for the Seahawks in a couple of years. Um, so that's, that's, that's the next step. Teddy, this was great. Very much appreciate your time, your insight, uh, great reporting, and uh, I'm, I'm assuming when you do more, we'll be back in touch and have you back on the show. Thanks so much. All right, Teddy Schleifer, everybody, uh, from Puck News. Um, so that's super interesting because in a lot of ways, Teddy was like, yeah, there's not a lot that's changed. He's just you know leaning harder in one direction, um, but not it, – it's kind of like, hey, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Probably not, but maybe – and now we're just closer to the deadline. Um, and so it's going to involve a change of heart for him to to ultimately get in on this. But it's kind of like it, it's kind of like when you are thinking about going somewhere. You're like, yeah, I'm thinking about it. Like, I don't know. Like, we'll see. We'll see. And you know, in the back of your head, you're not you're not leaving your house. You never even got dressed for that party. You were never going. That's kind of what this feels like. Could you at the last minute? Your crush, you find out they're going to be there or whatever other thing might motivate you to go, whether it be positive motivation, something that you're looking forward to or guilt. Oh God, I've canceled on them the last three times. Oh, I better put, I better put pants on. That's kind of what this feels like that at the end, it's like, Hey, you sure you don't want to come? Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to, I'm going to stay home. And, and we're closer to that conversation or maybe that conversation has happened now. It's just that the party doesn't start for another couple hours. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.